Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2. So part 2 we will be using multi-threading to speed up our application by a huge huge factor. So last time we saw that we could only do it like a single thread and this is where we left off right and we were just doing it in a single thread and doing it one image at a time. So we can actually uh, use this I mean and make it a multi-thread application because fetching one image does not have anything to do with fetching another image right from a different range so they are completely independent operations which you can actually multi-thread and Python's multi-threading is actually a very simple thing all you have to do is just put everything in a function and just call that function with different uh, parameters and uh, Python will yeah call this I mean, call them on different threads with different parameters and Python will just do the multi-threading part for you so it's very very simple and it's very easy to implement so that being said let's just go ahead and dive right into the tutorial and so we need a few dependencies but nothing to nothing external right so this comes inbuilt with python and this will be import threading and import math so math is basically for some various math functions that we will be using okay so the first thing what we have to do is copy this entire thing this range whatever this uh, for loop and put it inside a function so we say def we'll call it get pokemon get pokemon okay and we it takes two parameters start and all right and we just paste it and we say we pass the start and the end okay so basically this function will actually just take a start and end value and it will fetch only those Pokemons that are in this range. So if the range is from 1 to 50, it will fetch only those values that are between 1 and 50. So everything else will be taken care of by another thread. Okay, why is it throwing an error? Expected indented block. Okay, this is indented. Why is this throwing an error? Okay, yeah, okay, that's gone. So one more thing, just put a print statement saying started worker for range um, start comma to end. Okay, so basically this will actually put a neat print statement that will actually uh, show us what uh, images is being done on what thread. So yeah, we can just go back to then like see which thread was doing what range. Alright, so next what we have to do is we have to create uh, a list of threads, right? Thread underscore list and we'll be pushing thread objects onto this list. And one more thing I want to point out is we'll be doing this in a very generic way uh, such that it will be applicable for any number of cores on any CPU. So if you have like just uh, one processor and it's a dual threaded or um, like yeah two or three threads you can you can actually use this use run this program on that too or if you have like if you are like me and if you have like a 16 threaded uh, Ryzen 1700 processor it will work on that too and it's not like we are using a fixed number of threads so the number of threads is also going to be dynamic and you can actually set it through a variable so we'll be we'll have another uh, variable for thread count thread underscore count is equal to 16 in my case so this will be uh, uh, the number of threads in your case. So I just put a comment here saying um, What is this comment? Uh, so Put Your thread Count here So yeah, I'll be posting this uh, Posting the code in the description so you can it will probably it'll probably be on my github gists Okay, so put your thread count here usually Two times codes okay codes usually okay okay so usually if you have like a four core processor your number of threads will usually be eight and so on and we need one more thing that will be the image count image underscore count is equal to 801 so this will be the total number of images that we'll have to scrape from the internet and as I said earlier, this can be used for anything, not just Python. All right. So you can use this for uh, scraping flower data, or if you want to scrape 
let's say uh, if you're into like anime or whatever if you have like a web page that has a lot of anime characters in sequence you can use this to f scrape that also or whatever right if you have like a bunch of cats cat images dog images whatever anything is possible with this you just need to find a sequence you mean maybe it's a date timestamp or whatever okay so in my case it was pretty straightforward is a it was a number so yeah that is easy for me so yeah that being said let's just go ahead and create our threads so for i in range um thread count okay so for each thread that we have we have to create a start okay and an end so basically this will say what range this thread will um fetch the pokemon from so this will actually be uh so yeah so we have to show uh we need a formula for this right so the i thread so there are 16 things right so we want to divide this 16 equally uh, I mean, yeah, we want to divide 800 images equally amongst the 16 threads. So we do uh, image count divided by thread count, right? So this will actually give us an equal number of uh, images, right? Um, and we just do i into. So if it is 0, it will be 0. It will start from 0. If it is 1, it will start from uh, 800 divided by 16. That will be 50. 50 point something because 801. So yeah, but we'll be using math dot floor for that. So we'll be saying math dot dot floor, okay, and surround this math dot floor of that. All right. So and we just add one because all our um, images start from one, two, three, four. There's no zeroth image, right? But in Python, everything in programming usually everything starts from zero. So we'll, we will be skipping that by just adding a one to the start and the end. All right. And the end is just similar to the start, right? All you have to do is just increment this I by one. Just add one to the I. So basically you can think of this in this way. This, if it is zero, right? If I is zero, this will be, uh, I think zero and this will be 50. So when I is zero, this will be uh, zero. And this will be 50. Okay, let me just tab this and put this in a corner. Okay, so with i0, this will be 0 and this will be 50. So when i is 1, right, you want i, the want uh, the start to be the same as the end of the previous one, right? So because to make sure there's no gap or no images left out, so you want this end to be the same as the start of the next one, right? So all you have to do is increment this by one. So basically, uh, this end will be the same as the start of the ith one, the first one, right? The next i, it, this will be the same. This end will be the same as the start of the next uh, index. Does that make sense? I think it should. Like, yeah, just just stare at this for a while. You'll probably get it, right? So yeah, it's not really that hard. So let's remove these two. Okay. Next, what we have to do is we have to append, we have to like, let's create a thread object, right? Threading dot uh, thread. Okay. And we pass the target. That's basically the function that you want to execute. That will be get Pokemon in this case. And we also have to pass the arguments that we have to say. In this case, it will be start end end. All right. So basically, it will call this function. It will create a thread which we'll call this function with these arguments. Got it? It's pretty simple. And all we have to do is append this to the thread array or thread list dot append, put this inside this and we are good to go. So basically we created a thread object here and we're just appending that to the thread list. All right. So the reason why we are holding a thread list is because uh, we want to start all of them simultaneously and wait for all of them simultaneously and this won't be possible if you just create a thread and uh, in the for loop itself without appending it anywhere so that it won't be accessible anywhere later on right so we just say t is equal to thread dot thread or I mean threading dot thread into t dot start uh, we won't have any way of saying t dot wait later on right if you come out of this for loop we have no access to that thread so all we have to do is create a thread object and store it in an array 
so similarly for we have to like now we have to do is uh, start all the threads so for thread in thread list so this yeah so this will actually just iterate through the entire thread list and return a thread object and all you have to do is thread dot start okay so thread dot start will actually start the given thread and this will iterate through the entire list and start all the threads similarly what we have to do is wait for all the threads right so for the waiting is basically join so join basically means we are waiting for this thread to join the main thread right so here what happens is it diverges from the main thread and starts a thread of its own right and here what happens is it comes back and joins back the main thread basically killing the thread and finishing its execution right okay so i think this is it and this should actually work out of the box and let's see how fast it goes so i actually deleted all the images that was in our image folder and i'm just going to take another look and see quickly if there's anything that i've missed um okay there's nothing that I don't think I've missed anything here. Okay, so this should actually work. Fingers crossed. Let's go. Let's run this and let's see how long it takes, right? So yeah. It's actually fetching all the images like so much faster. You can even visually tell that all the images is like the, the basically the rate at which the print statement is running itself is like really fast compared to the previous one 19.44 seconds holy shit that's actually a record okay i've actually run this program a lot of times before but this is actually the fastest that is it has actually run right so if you see like compared to last time i think last time we had 114 144 seconds was what we estimated it would take for 800 images right now we did it in 19.4 seconds that's actually a lot faster 7.4 times faster and that's insane like if you're like trying to like uh fetch a lot of images like let's say like you know a data set of like 10000 images so you definitely have to use multi threading in that case right so let me just show you that it actually successfully fetched all 80, 801 images successfully okay so you can see all 801 pokemon images have been successfully scraped in 19.4 seconds just as insane right insane so just do 801 divide by 19.4 that's 41 images per second can you just imagine 41 images per second yeah that's just insane man this is this is out of the world all right so that's it guys and uh, If you have anything just leave a like I mean leave a comment and as i said earlier my channel is pretty new and you can actually help me shape this channel into what it has to become like you know like a really cool programming channel or uh, if you want to like see something really cool or if you want to see an api um that has not been done before let me know and i'll cover it if i think it's valuable okay and as i said i won't be doing a lot of beginner stuff i like to cover something that's intermediate because every channel does beginner stuff right and i want to do something different and something that actually helps people because i know everyone knows basic programming but no one really knows what to do from there so that's it right um thanks for watching and let me know what i should do in the future and stay tuned bye bye